Today on Commission Africa, the team explore the ghost town of Goldman Skop and travel through some of the most breathtaking landscapes Africa has to offer. After their time with the wild horses in Oz, we catch up with the team as they travel through the arid terrain to reach their evening's destination. We're about uh, 30, 30, 35 k's outside Luderitz and the terrain has changed dramatically. It's just sand and dunes wherever you look and we're about to come past the place where a bomb had exploded in one of the walls. We're going to stop our shopping right now, which is a bit crucial because we're not going to see another shopping town for about five days and uh, we've got half an hour to do it because we it's almost the sun's almost setting and we've got to go and set up camp and sort of cook and all that so it's going to be a busy evening um, and yes like i said half an hour to shop so it's going to be a sprint like the uh, amazing race almost so it's going to be fun one of the strangest places i've ever seen on the african continent it almost looks like a desert, looks like a nuclear bomb has gone off. It's just an amazing, amazing place. Right here, just about 20 kilometers short of Luderitz in Namibia. And you can see behind us just uh, the terrain that goes on for just kilometer after kilometer after kilometer. Truly an experience, Jen, to be here with the wind coming off the ocean like this. Something every single person needs to experience. Absolutely. Probably what's so amazing is that we've just come out of the like a sub-desert area into the sand dunes and now into a place that's just like a wasteland really. Um, just amazing to experience the, the very fast change in terrain. Just part of nature I guess here in Namibia. Uh, also just past a, the ghost town and it's just it's amazing place. It's, it's an eerie feeling and the wind is pounding so we really are in for a great experience here in Namibia. The crew reach Luderitz where they make a quick stop to do some shopping before reaching their campsite for the night at the nearby Shark Island. Okay, so we're at um, Shark Island um, in Namibia. It's our first real sighting of the Atlantic Ocean, which is pretty cool, which means you're really on the west coast of the, of the country. Um, it's quite beautiful here actually. Um, the city lights and the harbour and everything looks really, really picturesque and spotty. Um, it's almost like you like a lighthouse kind of surroundings. There's a little light in the yellow over there as well. It was very, very busy trying to get the camp set up ready for supper time. Um, it was another late arrival at the campsite, but um, it's still worth having the ablutions and that's we push through. We were originally going to go camp at um, Dyer's Cross. Uh, we decided to go for this place instead because of the warm showers and the ablutions, which hopefully, you know, which does make a big difference on a trip like this. But yeah, we're all very keen for supper now. Um, it seems like breakfast supper is almost ready. So we have some chow and then have to get a good nice rest so we can go early tomorrow morning to Dyer's Cross. We're on Shark Island right now. It's kind of windy. We're right on the coast. So it's windy, it's cold. It's going to be a good night though. We're going to get some food in us. Wake up early in the morning and get back on the road. It was a really good night though, we set up camp pretty quick, so we're getting faster. Alright, well, after a long day's drive, you need to eat like kings. So um, tonight we're cooking up a, a spaghetti a la General and a souffle a la Elman. Wow. And um, that's what we're going to be having tonight. So gents, well, what is it General? What we got? A great spaghetti here, we got... Um, some carrots that we're cooking up. We got some tomato puree. Um, we're gonna have a lot of vegetables. You, you, you have to eat a lot of vegetables. You have to eat a lot of good things. Uh, it's already late at night, and we've just got into camp. So when we arrive at a camp, it's a quick setup, and uh, the chefs get going straight away. So any good expedition needs great chefs, and uh, these are two of the best. I would take them anywhere with me. Quite a unique setting. The drive here was also very interesting. The last few, I don't know, about 30 k's. The landscape is just awesome. It's like something out of, feels like we're on Mars and then it feels like you're in the desert and now it feels like we're in Egypt as well because, but then it's on the waters. It's really, yeah, the, the scenery is quite amazing here. The canyon was also quite awesome this morning. Um, you know, just looking down at the valley, as we drove off, I was just thinking about how when we go through the valleys of life, the seasons that we're in, when we go through the valleys, we always tend to look up at the mountaintop and we sort of miss the beauty 
that is in that valley season. Yes, the valley is not always a nice season to go through, but there is beauty in it. And um, we only tend to see it when we're at the top of the mountain. So yeah, I was challenged a bit today to to remember when I'm in the valley, to, to rely on God to show me the beauty of it too. So yeah, that was quite awesome. It's early morning on day five and the crew prepare for a long day ahead. Shark Island, as it's known, right here on the western peninsula of uh, Namibia. Again, one of the amazing spots to come and have a look at, but a very interesting spot. Uh, this is where it was the fishing uh, capital uh, of the whole of Namibia, but also it was an amazing place where a lot of wealth was found in the form of diamonds, and we're going to be looking at that today. Uh, we're going to be looking at also where Bartholomew Dias arrived uh, over here as one of his stopping points, busy exploring and looking at southern Africa to see where the end of Africa was. And uh, yeah, just a very strategic place. Behind me you can see the harbour with many of the fishing vessels in it, uh, which has a, a beautiful protection from the western storms that come in and then the boats go straight out and would harvest and catch a lot of oysters as well. Uh, a lot of seafood is produced here that feeds a nation, but not only a nation, is exported all over the world. This is Shark Island. Now one thing about um, going on expeditions like we are is it's many hours of driving, a lot of uh, late nights and early mornings, and again, is no exception. We're up bright and early this morning. Uh, we already packed up, we've had breakfast, and uh, we're hitting the road, and it's not even 7 a.m right now so so these are the kind of things that we uh, are doing on expedition and uh, we want to get out of here we want to get to where we need to go we start today our journey of heading up north and we head all the way towards uh, right up towards the Kaneni River on the northern border and uh, that's where we're looking and in search of the Himba people where we will be ministering and our missions teams will be uh, preaching the gospel to these wonderful, beautiful people. So it's going to be a great day. We're not getting there today, but uh, in another two or three days we will be there. This is a vast country and we've got to cover vast ground. We're presently at Luderitz, one of the biggest diamond areas in the world. Behind me is one of the many diamond barges that operate off the coast, the west coast of Namibia. What happens is the diamonds get washed over thousands of years from the inland of the country and then they get caught in the currents in the Atlantic Ocean behind me and get swept along the coastlines. So behind me, they're busy sucking all the silt and the alluvial mud from the oceans and they're processing all the diamonds in these barges. Now these diamonds are shipped all over the world and uh, belong to one of the biggest diamond companies called De Beers. After the team have had their daily devotions, they set off for the nearby Diaz Cross, named after Portuguese explorer Bartholomew Diaz, who sailed into the Luderitz Bay in 1488. Well, our journeys brought us to one of the most uh, western points in the nation of Namibia, and we're standing on a little peninsula that sticks out into the ocean, known as Dias Point. And right behind us is the Dias Cross that was positioned here in the year 1488 is when Bartholomew Dias, one of the great explorers, first came and founded uh, this area of Namibia. It's a real historical place and it actually celebrates a pioneering spirit, exploration spirit of Bartholomew Dias. And it makes us think of Christians of today. In fact, we believe that the word speaks about believers having to have that same type of spirit to take back the ground that the enemy has taken from us uh, just for the kingdom of God, that we can have victory in every place. Just as Bartholomew never gave up, but he explored one point after the other, so we as children of God have got the word of God to claim as new ground in our lives. You know, Jen, there's that scripture that uh, we, we've read so often, it's called the prayer of agreement. And uh, right here in uh, the, the Matthew chapter 18, uh, down in verse 19, it says these words. It says, Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together or make sympathy together about whatever, anything and everything, the Amplified Bible says, they may ask, it will come to pass and it will be done for them by my Father 
in heaven. What a scripture that is. You know, I, I was thinking about Bartholomew Dias as he traveled on this great excursion over the seas to find the southernmost point of, of Africa. And uh, on his journey down, he landed at this little city or this area that was not in existence then. It was pioneering ground, which today is known as Ludritz. And uh, right over here, the cross is, is standing as significant, 1488. Hmm. Think about that. How many hundreds of years ago, a nation or a position was founded that had never been founded before. I want you to understand there is something called a pioneer spirit inside every one of you. There is a, a, a desire inside every one of you to accomplish great things. And I know that God has placed that seed within you. It doesn't have to be for the explorers of old. It doesn't have to be for our modern day explorations as we are on right now. Every one of you, there is something inside of you that God wants you to find the destiny of who you are. That's right. In fact, if you find that there's certain limitations in your life that you can't go on and get what God has placed inside of you, perhaps there's sickness or, or there's um, a loved one or, or broken relationships that are just hindering you from going out and taking by faith what is rightfully yours, I want you to know that the Word of God says that if two or more of you agree on the Word of God concerning your life to get rid of those limitations, that nothing will stop you from really achieving what God has for you. He says, whatever you ask for in my right. name, I will give it to you. You can take that ground as yours. So if it's prosperity that you believe in God for, if it's healing in your body, if it's deliverance, whatever area you are needing your breakthrough for, for that you want to gain new ground in the spirit and in the physical, you just have to remember the power of the prayer of agreement that we just read to you in Matthew chapter 18. So all the way from Ludritz, be the explorer, be the one that pushes past those limits that are holding you back in your life and become a person that God has destined for you to become. Next, the team backtracks slightly in order to visit the famous Skolmanskop, now a diamond mining ghost town. We're in Corman's Corp now. It's an old ghost town of where the diamond mines used to be. We're about to go on a tour now. And we're going to shuffle our feet the whole time to see if we can't pick up any diamonds in between our toes or anything. So just be praying for us that we find something. And we'll tell you the results when we're done. We're at Corman's Corp. We're looking in the curio shop now. Just now, in about 15 minutes, we're going to go for a tour around the whole area, which I'm pretty excited for. But yeah, it's a nice curio shop. You can get a bunch of stuff to do with Namibia and Coleman's Corp and, and clothes and stuff. The team take a guided tour of the ghost town where they learn of its rich history and influence as well as soak up the beauty of the surrounding amidst the ruin. We are in Kormans Kop. It's an old diamond mining town and the diamonds were found here by chance in about 1908 and they are found everywhere above ground so literally people were crawling on their stomachs picking up diamonds out of the, out of the, the desert sand. It created quite a rush and at that stage about 20% of the world's diamonds came from this area. The area was then deserted in the late 1920s when bigger diamonds were found further south down at the Orange River and literally people just packed up overnight and raced down to the Orange River to stake their claim hoping for bigger diamonds. The area is now a, a national monument and um, is still an active diamond area as diamonds still can be found around. It's pretty cool to see how they did it back a long time ago before technology. Pretty ingenious. I like it. We're in the kick and bar. There's a bowling alley right here. And then if you come over this side, that's the bowling alley. And then these are the original balls that they used. And the, the they, we call it 10 pin bowling, which here they, they play with nine pins because it was shaped in a diamond as well. It's pretty cool. It's really nice to see the old school um, bowling alley and how they suggest things. Um, not quite the automated process as we used to these days. Um, it looks like a cushion in there, so people obviously used to collect the balls and post them down the runway again. So it's quite fun to see. And those are the original pins apparently. So 
a very old metal worn, but um, yeah. The crew leave Gormanskop and travel through an incredible Namibia with its ever-changing landscape until they meet up with fellow colleague Graham Thompson. Oh, here we are, Graham. Great to meet up with you, man. Yeah, nice. And uh, I mean, I, I know you came through a different route to join us and uh, to get our satellite uplink uh, with us. We're going to be broadcasting from the satellite uplink, and um, this one's name is Scotty. So, how, how many hours did it take you? About 17 hours non stop driving. You drove through the night and uh, had a little bit of a rest waiting for us here. And uh, we're in this little one horse town. Uh, we're going to do a quick re we're going to do a quick refuel, and uh, and then we're going to carry on. And um, we'll be basically this will be opening up, and we'll be satellite uplinking uh, to the continent uh, from our expedition. So a very exciting time, and thank you for bringing Scotty with us. So welcome to the team. All right, nice great to have you with us, and uh, you're officially nice you, part of the co-mission team. <laughs> My name is Graham Thompson, Satellite Uplink. I'm quite keen to drive the new rough routes, the 4x4 challenges, um, teamwork, and just to be part of a team exploring into Africa and spreading the word of God. So we were at the ghost town earlier on today, and it's where they do some mining. And people actually can crawl on their knees in the sand dunes and pick up diamonds and can find the stones on the sand. That's how easy it is to find diamonds there. They took us through all the old houses and took us through the procedures of how they used to mine and, and the equipment. Um, we had the opportunity and the chance to walk through the town and we got some footage and some photos and yeah, we spent some time there. We went, we went on a tour, it was really interesting and yeah, it built in a bit of history. Well, today has been another great day. Um, a lot of driving, hundreds of kilometers again on um, actually very good gravel roads uh, in the nation of Namibia here. We left Ludritz early this morning. Uh, one or two stopping points we needed to be at, but pretty much most of the day has been on the road. And um, we again chasing the sunset to be able to get to a place called Davisip Parcel, um, where we're going to try and camp for tonight and spend the night there and then push on tomorrow. Uh, to be able to get to Sesrin and then through into a 4x4 terrain area where we're going into the sand dunes of the Namib Desert. But um, that's tomorrow's problem today. Uh, we, we've got just on about 50 kilometers left and uh, we should be there. So all the vehicles have held out good and uh, we're just so glad we met up today with Scotty. Scotty is our satellite uplink and um, he came through from uh, South Africa to join us because we're going to be doing some live broadcasts from the bush and uh, so Scotty joined us and we're excited about that. People say why do we call him Scotty? Well very simply his name is Beam Me Up Scotty and uh, that's where we got the name from. So yeah, so we're looking forward to that and uh, being able to broadcast from Namibia. Uh, the journey is taking us north now so we've got still a few more hundreds of kilometers north in the next three or four days and then we'll be arriving at the tribe of where we've been trying to get to with the Himba people and uh, the missions work will start so yeah good day all round. The team arrive at Dewey Sib Castle and scramble to make a meal in the dark before calling it an end to the day. It's Saturday morning in Namibia and once again the team are up early to pack up camp refresh themselves and hit the road once more. Today 6, Saturday morning. It was just under a week ago that we left, so we are heading on to Sesrim today. It's going to be an exciting drive. Uh, apparently it's a very nice campsite, very, very popular campsite as well. And then get there, we're going to try and head out in probably in the next hour or so. Yeah. Get there, unpack, unhitch the caravans and quickly rush off and try and get to Sources Flay, which is in the middle of the desert. So um, it's well known for Dune 17, which is, I won't say the highest, but one of the highest uh, dunes in the movie. So, yeah, exciting day.
Yeah, we were going along the gravel road, quite a bumpy road with lots of ruts and lots of sand. And next thing, I felt this loud noise and the, the vehicle started pulling off to the one side. Pieces were flying off all over the place and um, we came to, to quite a sudden stop. And as you can see, the tire is pretty much shredded to pieces. Fortunately, it looks like the room's okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we're all safe, that's the main thing. The crew push on to Cesarium where they experience 4 by 4 like never before and then tackle the extraordinary Dune 17. Well, it's beautiful, but jeez, what a climb. Looks like we're only halfway up. And this is the smaller one. Dune 45 is apparently bigger than this one. So anyway, just hoping we can make it to the top so we can do a few shots. Climb it down. This is not for the faint of heart or the unfit. If you're unfit, go to the gym first. Then come here, because really, it chows your calves. <laughs> anyway, I hope you get some nice shots up top there. See you later. Well, we're standing on top of one of the higher sand dunes in a place called Sosis Flay. And uh, this is in the nation of Namibia, where a river runs through in any heavy rainy season and cannot get to the ocean. Right over here, Jen, is where it all stops. Behind us, you will see the last remaining part of last year's flood right here in Sources Flood. You know, Andrew, with all the sand, and it's absolutely beautiful, especially the color, but the, the amount of sand here is amazing. And it makes me think of the covenant that God had, the father of our faith, Abraham. Yeah. And God said to Abraham, Abraham, everything that is mine is yours, and everything that is yours becomes mine. That was the beginning of a relationship where he had access to the power of God for generations to come. That's right. You know, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse uh, 16, it says these words, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we are children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we also suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. We are joint heirs. Absolutely, and the same covenant that Abraham had with the father of all things, he, we have the same covenant, except it's even better in Christ Jesus. So for those of you who feel that there's sickness in your body, Jesus died, and the covenant applies to you, so that instead of your sickness, you have the divine health. If you find that you're struggling in the area of poverty, Jesus died, and the covenant is for you, that instead of poverty, you can have prosperity. In fact, every area of your life where there is lack, there is a covenant that you can enjoy in Jesus Christ, where you can have the fulfillment of the blessing and the promises of God. That's right, you know, that's what the Word tells us too, that we can walk in, because why? We are joint heirs with Him. And so no matter what you're going through, no matter what difficulties or trials or tribulations, I want you to know, God is there. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And He paid the price on the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago that you can walk in divine blessing, in divine prosperity, and fullness of health in every area of your body. Just think what those children of Israel must have gone through, Jen, that desert experience going through when the wind was blowing like it is right now in the desert, when the sand was beating down, the sun was harsh on them. You know, God gave them a shadow by day. He gave them a cloud of fire by night to be able to sustain them, that they too could step into their promises through obedience. My prayer for you and our prayer for you is that you too would step into the, the promises that God has for you. After downhill dune racing, some of the team stopped to view the famous Dune 45. Saturday and we have uh, just experienced Sausage Flay. We've stopped over at the very famous Dune 45. Um, photographers tend to love this dune walk because it's, uh, as you can see, it goes quite orange, quite red by this time of the day. And uh, we've caught it perfectly now. So taking a moment to just take in the scenery, get some good pics, and then uh, home to our campsite in about an hour's time for a good meal there. Hopefully they've prepared it for us. A hot, tired and sunburnt crew returned to camp 
for a relaxing supper and an early night to end day six. Fantastic day, incredible scenery, countryside. It's almost like banners, mountains, colors, rocks, black rocks, red sand, driving the sand, the dunes. Really great day, a fantastic meal to end it off with. Just about ready for bed. Next time on Co-Mission Africa, the team reaches Swapkopmund and explores the true living desert.